All right, uh, let's go and review some things that we were talking about in our last couple of lessons. Uh, we recently proved that if two angles have their sides parallel, right side, left side, left side, right side, the angles are? Supplementary, thank you, Abby. But if two angles have their sides perpendicular, right side to left side, left side to right side, the angles are? Supplementary. supplementary. But if the angles have their sides parallel, right side to right side, and left side to left side, the angles are? Equal to the sides of perpendicular, right side to left side, left side to right side, the angles are? Supplementary. supplementary. But the sides of perpendicular, right side to right side, left side to left side, the angles are? Equal. Equal. See, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say it slowly. If the sides are parallel, Right side to right side and left side to left side class, the angles are equal. equal. And if the sides are perpendicular <laughs> right side to right side and left side to left side, the angles are equal. equal. But if the sides are parallel right side to right side and left side to left side, then the angles are equal. equal. But if the sides are perpendicular right side to left side and left side to right side, the angles are supplementary. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if right and right go together and left and left go together, doesn't matter if they're parallel or perpendicular, equal angles. If right and left go together and left and right go together, they're all mixed up, whether they're parallel or perpendicular, it's supplementary. And then we also proved at long last that the three angles of a triangle class add up to a straight, straight angle. angle. The sum of the three angles is a straight angle. And very powerful theorem. There's a lot of truths that can be easily deduced from that truth. And those were the, the nine corollaries, excuse me, that you copied out. Go ahead and read corollary 11 1 for me, if you would, please, Noah. Exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angle. What did we earlier proven about an exterior angle of a triangle, Michael? Um. It's greater than either one of the opposite interior angles. This corollary proves, or is going to prove, that it equals the sum of those same two opposite interiors. It's bigger than either one of them, but it's equal to the sum. Turn to the back of the Theorem 11 proof. Go to the Theorem 11 proof in the Proofs of Theorems Corollary section. And on the back side, let's go ahead and prove that this is true. So corollary 11-1, and at the top, exterior angle of triangle equals sum of opposite interior angles. That's a bad sigma again. Exterior angle of triangle equals the sum of the opposite interior angles. And if you would, go ahead and draw a triangle and extend one side to make an exterior angle. Draw a triangle and extend one side to make an exterior angle. We'll be given triangle ABC with AB extended to any point D. And technically, we could have extended whatever side we want. It didn't really have to be this particular side, nor extended that particular direction, but whatever. Um, we want to prove that the exterior angle, angle CBD, is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. Which angles are the opposite interior angles, Adam? Um, opposite. Um, to angle CBD. To the, with regard to the exterior angle, where are the opposite interior angles? Angle C and angle A. Angle C and angle A. So we want to prove that angle CBD equals angle C plus angle A. Prove it equals the sum of the opposite interior angles. <clears throat> Once you have that down, two columns, statements and reasons.
Now keep in mind, this is a corollary. Class, a corollary is a statement that may be easily proven using the previous, previous theorem. theorem. So corollary 11-1 is going to build on the fact that, well, whatever theorem 11 said. What did theorem 11 say, Dylan? <coughs> The three angles of a triangle add up to a straight angle, correct? So if this is a corollary, then it stands to reason that we'll probably want to use that theorem. So if we just proved theorem 11, it seems like a while ago because it was yesterday, but if we just proved that the three angles add up to a straight angle, probably our second statement could be, Brecken? Okay, we just said theorem 11 says what again, Brecken? Okay, so let's let's state that the three angles of that triangle equal a straight angle. Almost good. There's only one tiny problem with what he said. Which angle would it be? Right? There's two angles at B. That's a little annoying. I'll call this one and two, for instance. And so maybe if we said angle A plus angle 1 plus angle C equals a straight angle, only because we'd extended the side, right? But angle A plus angle 1 plus angle C equals a straight angle because, what's the reason, class? The, the sum of the sum of the three angles of a triangle equals a straight angle. Could we say that the uh, three angles of a triangle are supplementary? Uh, yes. No. No, but why not? Doesn't supplementary meet up to a straight angle? They add up to a straight angle, right? Yeah. No. Two angles. Two angles that add up to a straight angle. So, yeah, because there's three of them, no, we wouldn't say they're supplementary, but they do still add up to a straight angle. All right. Uh, so there's there's our, our theorem 11. Some of the three angles of a triangle equals a straight angle. Um, how would that help me? So you get angle CBD equaling angle C and angle A. Josh, thoughts? Um, that way. This is a corollary. It's supposed to be easy to prove using the previous theorem. So we're like, I'm a fool and put the previous theorem in my proof. But how does the previous theorem, saying that these three angles add up to a straight angle, help me to get this angle equal to these two? Thoughts? Mm. These three all add up to a straight angle. I feel like I want to do a substitution or something because we do that in every proof, right? But I'm like, I don't know, how would we substitute? I don't know. Um, maybe there were another straight angle or something somewhere. Mm -hmm. Lana, do you see a straight angle? Mm -hmm. Well, the bottom line is a straight line, but do we have a straight angle anywhere? Where the angle one is? Oh, angle one and two, right? This is a straight line. This is a point, and there's a couple angles about a point on one side of a straight line. So we could say number three, Lana, that. Angle one equals number three. Well, oh, wait, measure wait, a little no, book no. equal. Or plus angle two equals a straight. There we go. How many were thinking we could say angle one and angle two add up to a straight angle? By the way, let's come over here and what we're trying to prove. I said CBD equals C plus A. Let's just make a note. CBD is two, right? We've since numbered it since the given and the proof, we have decided to number an angle to put that there. Um, what's the reason though? Come back to Josh. How does Lana know that one and two add up to a straight angle? Because this, isn't it something to do with the point on one side? Yeah, there is, yeah. How about start with the sum of all the angles about a point on one side of 
straight line that will throw this table over? Uh-huh. Uh, the sum of all the angles of that point on one side of a straight line equals a straight angle. That was word for word in formal statement 10. Well done. By the way, this is why it helps to have these things memorized in formal statements, terms, definitions, things like that. Uh, axioms, postures, theorems, corollaries. Memorize it all. Uh, okay, hopefully you've been memorizing little bits at a time. Right? Did you say supplementary? These two would be supplementary, wouldn't they? Right? Now, I don't necessarily have to say they are, but if, if I wanted to say number four, angle one and angle two are supplementary, I could. Definition of supplementary angles. I don't think it helps me. Um, what uh, what might help me, though, Brandon? Okay, what? For who? Uh, well, I mean, um, you can say that angle A plus angle one plus angle C plus angle one plus angle two equals all straight angles are equal. Yeah, all of this is a straight angle, all of that's a straight angle, and all straight angles are equal. So after all, all of that equals all of that because, as he said, all straight angles are equal. <clears throat> Abby, I feel like we're getting close to angle 2 equals angle C plus angle A. Yeah, the only thing, uh, it's pretty much there, right? A and C equal angle 2. It's just there's this angle 1 over here that's in the way, and there's an angle 1 in the way there, but Abby, you said we can... Yeah, subtract away the angle one. So if I do, since angle one equals itself, right, I'm subtracting an equal amount or equal quantity from both sides. So that's just the subtraction axiom. And we're done. Five steps. No subtraction axiom. Feel pretty straightforward there. Questions on the corollary proof? Big thing to note. An exterior angle of a triangle, you need to know two things. You do need to know theorem five, exterior angles bigger than either one of these opposite interior angles. Now you also need to know it equals the sum of the opposite interior angles. Does that make sense? And that also makes sense if it equals the sum, then it has to be bigger than either one of them. By the way, there's another way we could have done this proof. I could have done it without even using theorem, uh, theorem 11. So we could have done this independent of theorem 11 if parallel to AC, I draw a line through B. I know that angle CBD is equal to the sum of all its parts. We'll call them 1 and 2. Because the whole equals the sum of all its parts, CBD equals angle 1 and plus angle 2. But if I've drawn this line parallel, then what is angle 1 equal to, class? Angle C. And if I've drawn this line parallel, what's angle 2 equal to, class? Angle A. Angle A. What are C and 1, class? What kind of angles? Alternate interior. Alternate interior, interior angles. What kind of angles are A and 2? Corresponding. Corresponding angles. And then we could have done a substitution with C, a substitution with A, and boom, we've got our proof. And actually, well, we would have had a state drawing the lines. So we have the given. Statement of drawing the parallel, three, four, five. It was still would have been five steps. Okay? And it wouldn't have used a theorem, which would kind of defeat the point of being a corollary, I guess. But uh, another way we could have done the proof here. Either way, no class that the exterior angle of the triangle equals the sum of the opposite interior The sum of the opposite interior angles. Kind of rough. Okay. Uh, back to your uh, theorems corollaries section of your notebook. Back to the theorems corollaries section of your notebook. And they're going to read corollary 11-2 now, if you would please. Uh, let's go to Michael. In any triangle, there can be but one right angle or one up to this angle. <clears throat> now, we've said that before, haven't we? Like, we've been asked questions already saying, how many obtuse angles can you have? How many right angles can you have? And we kind of already talked through the proof, but it was all based on the assumption, remember, that the three angles had equal a straight angle? So we said, well, you can't have two right angles because by definition, a right angle class is half a, half a straight angle. Two halves of a straight angle equals a straight angle. Now there's no degrees left for the third angle. So you can't have two right angles. Obtuse is already greater than right, so greater than half. Another greater than half gives you greater than straight angle, so you can't have two obtuse angles. But again, that was based on an assumption that the three angles added up to a straight angle. Well, now we've proven it, so now that would be the proof of corollary 11-2. We won't take time to write that out. Put a star in your notebooks next to corollary 11-3. Put a star next to corollary 11-3. Next year for some, 
couple years for others, right now for Michael, you'll take uh, pre-calculus, trigonometry, and this corollary is the basis for a lot of trigonometry that you'll study. Go ahead and read it for us, Michael. I know you just read the last one, but you're in pre-cal, so here we go. In any right triangle, two of two angles are complementary. The complementary nature of the two acute angles is so critical. It's where we get co-functions and co-angle, things like that, Michael. So um, anyway, these two acute angles, are they equal to each other, class? No. They might be, they could be, but they're not necessarily equal. But if the three angles always add up to a straight angle, and a right angle triangle by definition has a right angle, which by definition is half a straight angle, there's still half a straight angle left for these two to share, correct? Therefore, there is a right angle for these to share, and if there's two angles that add up to a right angle, they are complementary. So a lot of definition used in the proof of corollary 11.3. You will have to have that statement memorized. Guarantee you're gonna see it on a quiz, test, exam, pretty much the rest of the year. You better know that statement. Read it with me, class. In any right triangle, the two acute angles are complementary. Again, in any right triangle, the two acute angles are complementary. All right, corollary 11-4, read that for us if you would, Noah. Here's the basic gist of it. We got a couple of right triangles, which means, class, if they're both right triangles, they both have right, right angles. Okay. And this corollary says you got two right triangles, and we know that this angle equals this one that these angles got to be equal. Well, why would that be the case? Well, we just said in corollary 11.3 class, in any right triangle, the two acute angles are complementary. Oh no, we better say it again for Joshua. Try it again. In any right triangle, the two acute angles are complementary. Okay, so this angle one is complementary here. This angle two is complementary here. Complements of equal angles are equal. So therefore, if one acute angle of one right triangle equals one acute angle in the other, these two acute angles have to be equal. Does that make sense? Questions on the, the proof there. Again, not taking the time to write it out, save paper and save time, but does it make sense? So if that's true, that leads us to a couple of other things. Corollary 11-5. Go ahead and read that for us now, Adam. Two right triangles are congruent. If the hypotenuse and an acute triangle of one, three, uh, wait, wait. R, A R E. Wait. Two right triangles oh, are congruent. R, if if R the hypotenuse. Respectively, respectively, to the hypotenuse and an acute angle of the other. Yeah. Two right triangles are congruent if. Let's take a look here. So we've got a couple of right triangles. So they have right angles, right by definition. Are congruent if the hypotenuse and one acute angle of one triangle are equal respectively to the hypotenuse and an acute angle of the other. Well, we just stated in corollary 11 for class that if you got two right triangles and one acute angle and one equals one acute angle of the other, what's true about the other acute angles? Barely. They got to be equal because they're complementary to the equal angles stated earlier, right? So if these angles are equal in the right triangle class, what's got to be true about these angles? Equal. They got to be equal because they're complementary to equal angles. Complements of equals are equal. So if the hypotenuses, hypotenuse, hypotenuses are equal, and if these angles are equal, it'd be a piece of cake based on corollary 11.4 to show that these two angles are equal. What do we got, class? Angle side angle. Triangles are congruent. So we can add then hypotenuse angle, and you have HA at the end of that in your notebooks. If not, in parentheses, put capital H, capital A. Ha! Uh, it stands for hypotenuse angle. That's another way to prove triangles are congruent. Hypotenuse angle. Look at uh, corollary 11 6. Read that for us, Dylan. Two right triangles are congruent if they lay in either of the angle of one. Are equal to a leg and the corresponding of the angle on the other. 
And at the end, it says leg angle. And how many of you are like, we already proved leg angle. Why is it coming up again? Well, when we proved leg angle earlier, we proved, if you look at, in fact, if you want to flip over a page or two back to um, theorem, corollary, let's go with corollary 2-1. Flip back to corollary 2-1. It should just be a page or two over. This said, two right triangles are congruent if a leg and the adjacent acute angle of one right triangle is equal respectively to a leg and the adjacent acute angle of the other, because that was where we got angle side angles. We could not have any leg and any angle. Does that make sense? Because this wouldn't be angle side angle, it'd be side angle angle in a sense, and we hadn't proven that that was a way to prove triangles congruent. But here's the thought. If we know these two angles are equal, what does that mean about these two angles, class? Mm -hmm. Then they're equal. And we're right back to the old leg angle. Does that make sense? So basically, this corollary, 11.6, broadens it up to where, hey, I don't necessarily need the adjacent acute angle. If I do, that's great. That's still leg angle. Either acute angle will work, whether it's the adjacent or the opposite acute angle. So now leg angle has a broader meaning than it did before. Still a way to prove triangles congruent. Uh, corollary 11-7. Read that for us if you would, bracket. The two angles of one triangle are equal respectively to two angles of another triangle. Then the third angle of the first is equal to the third angle of the second. There we go. And this, is, this would almost be the most duh of all the corollaries, to be honest with you. This one is the one that you would think would be the very first one because it's so incredibly basic. But you got a couple trying. Well, go back. Remember the theorem? The theorem says if you have any triangle class, the three angles add up to a straight angle. So these three angles also add up to a straight angle. So let's just suppose I know that angle is equal to that one. And I know that this angle is equal to that one. Well, what are these three angles again? Straight angle and their sum. What's these three angles? If I were to subtract equals from equal straight angles and subtract more equals from equal straight angles, the remainders would be equal. equal. And that'd be these two angles. Duh, right? Two angles equal to two angles. The third angles have to be equal. Make sense? Would the triangles be congruent? Mm. Could be. Not guaranteed though, right? Because angle, 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 does it give you congruent triangles? Mm. Now, you got to decide somewhere, right, to make sure that you actually have congruency. Corollary 11 8, read that for us, uh, Joshua. Two triangles are congruent if the side and any two angles of one are equal, respectively, to a corresponding side and two angles of the other. Huh, now, we've done something with a side and a couple angles before, right? We call it angle side angle. That specifically dealt with triangles being congruent. When we had a side and the two adjacent angles equal to side and two adjacent angles. This corollary says the triangles are congruent if a side and any two angles could be these two equal to a side, corresponding side, and the corresponding two angles. Now, why would this work? Well, what did we just say in corollary 11.7? If two angles of one triangle equal two angles of the other class, third angle's got to be equal, okay? Two angles equal here, two angles equal here. What's got to be true about these two angles, class? they got to be equal. So we have angle, side, angle. So if you had side, angle, angle, since it could give you angle, side, angle, side, angle, angle is sufficient to give you congruent triangles. Do you have a capital S-A-A -A at the end in parentheses, side, angle, angle? And now as we look over here, um, I don't think, yeah, I can't really catch the poster in the camera here. Um, theorem 1, corollary 1-1. One, one. Theorem 2, corollary 2-1. Two, theorem 4, and finally this, and a broader definition of this now, opened up through theorem 11's corollaries. So we haven't gotten number 5 yet, but we've gotten all of this. Four ways for any two triangles, three ways for right triangles to be proven congruent. So theorem 11, again, opens the door to more ways to prove triangles congruent, since we end up proving a lot of congruent triangles, don't we? Since, after all, once triangles are congruent, lines and angles can be equal by 
CPCTE, absolutely. Um, let's see, and then corollary 11-9, not something we will use in proof because it has a number, but something that we can use yeah, just in general for our own benefit. And uh, Lana, go ahead and read that if you would. Each angle of an equal lateral triangle is 60 degrees. Yeah, we know if a triangle is equal lateral, equal sides, it will also be equal angular. I believe that's corollary 3-1. And if the three angles are equal, and we have now proven, not just assumed, proven that the three angles add up to a straight angle, which by definition then, since it's straight angle, straight line, half of a paragon, 180 degrees, based on the definition of a degree, each angle's got to be 60 degrees. Again, you're not going to use that in proof. But we've said already, you want a 60 degree angle, that's how big each angle is going to be in an equilateral triangle. Now, yeah, that would be how we would prove it. But again, it's based on knowing for sure now that the three angles do indeed add up to 180 degrees. Get some scratch paper out as well as your calculator because there's finally some math that we can do now that we know this. So let's do a little bit of math with some triangles here. We'll take a break from proof for the rest of the hour. <laughs> Some of you are relieved. Yes, finally. You can do it without a calculator. It's just helpful if you happen to have one. You don't really need a calculator per se. Let's suppose I have this picture here. I have a 105 degree angle here. I have a 43 degree angle here. And I want to find angles X and Y at your seats. Find the measure of those two angles. Okay, calculator is not necessary, but could be helpful. Okay, just a moment. Pencil down when you've got to go. find first? Brandon? X. Angle X? How'd you find angle X? I know uh, X plus 105 is Absolutely. Straight angle. Subtract from 180. How big is angle X? 75 degrees. 75 degrees. Could we have found angle Y first or did we have to find angle X first, Michael? We could have found angle Y. We could have found angle Y first. We didn't have to. It's not wrong to find angle X first. How would I have figured out angle Y though? Remember, the exterior angle equals the sum of the two opposite interior. So 43 plus something is going to equal that 105. So we could have found angle Y right away if we wanted to. Michael, it would have been? Um, 62 degrees. 62 degrees. If we approached it that way, how could I check my answer and make sure it's correct, Abby? Yeah, make sure that these three angles all add up to a straight angle. The other option is you could have said, well, if X is 75, I've already got 75 and 43, class that's 118, and then I could subtract from 180 to get this angle to be 62. How would I check in that case, Noah? Because I used the 180, to, so I can't use it as a check if I used it to calculate. Anyone thoughts? Add up 62 and 43 and see if it equals 105. So we would have used that way as a check there. How many, regardless of how you did it, you got 75 and 62? All right, draw this picture if you would. Tall, skinny, isosceles triangle. The vertex angle is 32 degrees. Find angle X and angle Y. Which one did you find first? Um, both. Both, right? You really do have to find these at the same time, don't you? Because in an isosceles triangle class, the base angles are going to be equal to each other. How did you find them both then, Adam? Um, 
That's a good break too from five to eighty, and I got seventy four degrees. You got seventy four when you subtracted thirty two well, from one eighty. I got. Um, <laughs> And then I got like 148 degrees. I got 74 and I divided it by two. Mm -hmm. I divided 148 by two. Oh, okay. You got 148 when you subtracted, right? Because this is how many degrees are shared, right? But they're shared equally. So then you divided by two, and your answers were, as he said, 74 degrees. Explanation lacked a little, but the answers are certainly correct. How many also got 74 for both angles? Good. Okay, question? I forgot that the bottom two. Does it make sense now? All right, how about this one? Um, let's go and say once again, we have an isosceles triangle. Suppose this angle here is 115 degrees. Find angles X, Y, and Z. Find angles X, Y, and Z. This time you really do have to find these in a particular order. Which is the first angle you must find? Dylan? You gotta find Z first. And how big is angle Z? 65 degrees. 65 degrees. Now as soon as you know Z, without doing any more math, we can get Reckon? Angle X, right? Because X and Z are both equal to each other. So once you get Z to be 65, boom, you know X is 65. Mm -hmm. Then you've got a couple ways you could go back and get Y bracket. Yeah, you know that X and Y together are going to equal the 115. So if you already have 65 here, that leaves how many up top? 50. So you could do it that way. If you did, you could check by making sure they all add up to 180. The other option is to say, hey, I got 130 degrees down here. That only leaves me 50 more for the top. I need to check and make sure that 15 and 65 add up to the 115. However you did it, how many got X is 65, Y is 50, Z is 65. Questions on that? Suppose we have a 54 degree angle here. Uh, let's say we have a 71 degree angle here. Find angle X. Josh, what did you do to find this? You just um, add both of those, 74 and 54, and then subtract from that. Good, we know that together adds up to 180. If I've already got how much? Uh, 125. 125 taken care of, that leaves 55. Ooh, now question class, it's obviously not drawn accurately here, because if this angle is 55 and this angle is 54, these two sides should be almost the same. It should be almost equal, shouldn't they? Since I have nearly equal angles here, both sides should have been nearly equal also. So poorly drawn. How many got 55 though for X? We don't trust our eyes anyway. It's a perfect picture. All right. <laughs> um, here's one for you. I've got a uh, 60 degree angle here. I've got a 50 degree angle here, a 70 degree angle here. I want you to find angle X, angle Y, and angle Z.
these could be solved in any order, truly, Lana. Which one did you solve for first? Probably X. X, okay. And uh, what did you get for angle X? 110. 110 degrees. Two ways you could have found that, Lana. Which way did you do it? Just subtract 180 minus 70. 180 minus 70 works great. What's the other way she could have found it? Uh, Brandon? Could have added 50 and 60 and gotten the 110 that way. And that note then, what is angle Y, Michael? Angle Y is going to be 130 degrees. Two ways to get it. Class, either take the supplement of 50 or add together the 60 and 70, the opposite interior angles. For angle Z, what do we end up with, Abby? 120 degrees. Either because you add up the 50 and 70, the opposite interior, or you find the supplement of 60. How many had 120, 110, or 110, 130, 120 in that order for X, Y, and Z? By the way, what do you get when you add X, Y, and Z? together. No, Comes to 360 degrees. Let's suppose this is a um, 47 degree angle. Let's suppose this is a 73 degree angle. Find W, X, Y, and Z. Let's change up some numbers here. particular order here, but we do have to find one of two angles first. Abby? Um, w. w or? or. I could find X right off, couldn't I? What would we get if we just found X right away, Abby? How would we get that if we solved it first? Just add, yeah, just add them together. We're going to do it anyway to subtract from 180 anyway, so why not just write the 120 and then when we subtract from 180 class for the W we get 60 degrees. Okay, so in that case, how big is angle Y going to be, Noah? 133 degrees. To me, I think it's faster to add than to subtract because you don't have to borrow with subtraction. You have to borrow with subtraction. Addition, you just carry it. I feel like that's easier. And then for angle Z, what do we get for that measure, uh, Adam? Um, we get 100. 33. Ooh, careful. Wait, wait, wait. Either add these or find a supplement of 73. For Z? For Z. Oh, um, 107. 107 degrees. I see you're giving me the answer for Y. Um, now check those exterior angles. Do they still add up to 360? Mm -hmm. hmm. Do you think that will always be true? Always, sometimes, never. Anyway. We'll come back to that thought later. You'll see picture problems, but you'll also see word problems. We've seen similar word problems in the past, but uh, the three angles of a triangle are in ratio two to seven to three. Find each of the angles. It's been a little while since we did a ratio type word problem, but how many unknowns do we have, Dylan? Three. I have angle one, angle two, and angle three, right? How would I represent the three angles? Show of hands. How would I represent the three angles in my triangle if they're in ratio two to seven to three? Josh? Two x seven x three. Yeah, how many think in the same thing Josh said? Two x seven x three x. Right, you just take the ratio values and plug an x in for them. Because as long as you have multiply the exact same thing by two, by seven, and by three, they'll reduce back to a two to seven to three, won't they? What's the equation going to be here, Brecken? What do I know about the three angles of a triangle? They add up to a straight angle. So let's put that into an equation then. Good. 2x plus 7x plus 3x, or 12x, I like that he combined them in his head, equals a straight angle or 180 degrees. So um, what's x, class? 15 degrees. Which angle is 15? The first, the second, or the third, class? None of them, right? 
There are two x, seven x, and three x. So what is my first angle? 30 degrees. Next angle? 105 degrees. And the last angle? 45. If you reduced them by 15, of course, you'd get 2 to 7 to 3, and they do add up to 180 degrees, the straight angle. Uh, similar problem, you do this one at your seats. Let's suppose I know that the three angles of a triangle are in a ratio. Let's go uh, 3 to 4 to 1. Find each of the angles at your seats. How do we represent the angles this time, Lana? Good. How many 3x, 4x, 1x for your unknowns? And what would the equation be, Brendan? And uh, we end up dividing away. We get x is equal to what here, Michael? 22 degrees, 30 minutes. 22 degrees, 30 minutes, or you might have said 22 and a half degrees or 22.5 degrees. Any of those would work. I do think you're better off shying away from minutes just because plugging it into multiply makes it a little challenging, but he's not wrong. Uh, what do we get then for, well, wait, which angle is 22 and a half or 22 degrees, 30 minutes, class? Um, angle three. Oh, yeah. Because it's a 1x. So this one really is 22 degrees, 30 minutes. How would I find angle one? Multiply that by three. Multiply one of these, preferably maybe this one, by three to get 67.5 degrees. Or at that point, if you wanted to, you could make the 0.5 degree of 30 minutes. We wanted to keep looking smart. And then for the 4x, just multiply one of those by four class, and we get Ooh, so what kind of triangle apparently are we dealing with here? Apparently, it's a right triangle. How many got those answers? 67 and a half, 90, and 22 and a half degrees, respectively. Questions on that? Here's this next one. Find the three angles of a right triangle if one acute angle is double the other. Hmm. How many unknowns do we have in this word problem? No? One could argue three. I would say so. It's a triangle, so three angles. Angle one, angle two, angle three. However, one of them technically isn't unknown, right? If it's a right triangle, we already know 90 degrees for one of them. You pick. Angle one. So we already know we have a 90 degree angle here. The other two angles class, if they're not the right angle, the other two angles have to be acute. You have a right angle, you have two acute angles, correct? Now, what do we know is going to be true about those two acute angles? They'll be complementary. But it says one of them is double the other. So how will I represent my second and third angles here, Brecken? Well, that's the answer. I was looking for how you represent them. A good job solving it in your head. <clears throat> one of them is double the other. Oh, X and 2X. X and 2X. There we go. Now, there's two ways you could go about the equation. One way would be to say, hey, I know the three angles of a triangle class add up to a straight, straight angle. angle. And you could say that x plus 2x plus 90 equals a straight angle. The quicker way would be to say, I know that the two acute angles class are complementary. So I could just say x plus 2x equals 90 degrees. Now, we can do it in our head. We add, we get 3x, we divide by 3 class, we do get x equals... 30 degrees. Obviously, then the other angle, which is double, is. And of course, we also know the right angle, since it said find the three angles. We know that the first angle is 90 degrees. And uh, they have what's called a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which they will get to know very well later, won't they, Michael? And you know very well already. You're a little bit of a leg up on them here, but they will get to know this very, very well later this year, in fact. Um, let's change it up just a little bit and have you solve this. So let's suppose. I want you to find the three angles of a right triangle if um, the two acute angles, could they be equal, class? Yes. Are they always equal? No. But they could be. So let's suppose they are. 
If the two acute angles are equal, find the three angles of the right triangle. What would the, they've already done the math in their head, yeah. what would the equation have to be though, Dylan? Uh, uh, 90 plus x plus x. Okay, that would work just fine. Maybe uh, someone else have another equation that would work just as well. Uh, Brandon, little bro? You could say x plus x or 2x equals 90 because these two equal acute angles will be complementary. Either way, class, what do you get for x? 45. 45. So what are the three angles? 45, 45, and 90. Also a triangle they will get to know very, very well later on this year. We'll look at that more. Turn your books to page 79. Turn your books to page 79. Bunch of seats I want you to do. Numbers one, three, four, five, and six. We'll skip number two, but doing one through six, skipping two there at the bottom of page 79. As needed, draw a sketch and solve. He's finished. Michael's finished. Oh, we are out of time. Tell you what, finish it up for homework. We'll take a look at it in our next lesson. All right, when the bell rings, you'll be dismissed.